We'd like to welcome our international viewers as we turn our focus to the Kennedy Space Center and our attention to CNN's John Holman. John? Well, they, uh, let's look at the live picture coming in from the Kennedy Space Center. As we tell you, the crew members of Shuttle Atlantis strapped in, completed all the checks they can make before the computer manages their ride into space. Countdown clock is again kicking, uh, ticking, um, and we'll have um, the launch in about three or four minutes. What you're looking at now is the, uh, the rudder at the end of the space shuttle. What the crew is doing and the computer are doing together now, testing all the control surfaces. The three main engines are wiggling back and forth on command by the computer. They want to make sure that they are not uh, blocked in any way for this launch because they're have, going to have to steer the shuttle into space. The launch will occur while Mir is a little bit east of the space shuttle. In fact, we've got a computer program from the analytical graphics company which tracks Mir for us. And uh, what you can see there, that's Mir over the British Isles. So as the shuttle lifts off from the Kennedy Space Center, it will be flying to the east in an effort to catch up with Mir. That's the perfect position for the shuttle to get there without wasting any fuel. For Michael Folt on Mir, this is going to be a long weekend of anticipation. After the shuttle leaves, it'll take two days to get up to him. The docking will come Saturday afternoon, and Dave Wolf will replace Fole as the Mir crew member on Sunday. At the launch pad, CNN's John Zarella standing by to watch the big show. John, any last-minute hitches? Not at all, John. Everything proceeding smoothly. No problems at all. They had a little bit of a delay this afternoon, a computer glitch, and then some thunderstorms rolled through here. So there were some problems with the actual tanking. They got started about an hour and a half late. But since then, not a burp out of the shuttle. The crew is on board. The weather is cooperating. It's turned uh, out to be a very, very nice evening here. It's, and they need to get off tonight because the weather's expected, John, to deteriorate pretty rapidly uh, come uh, tomorrow and into the weekend. John? Well, let's hope they can get it off. Looks like one of the spots. Spotlights uh, went out for a while and came back on. What you're looking at is the vent hood on top of the huge liquid fuel tank. It, um, it has uh, two suction devices up in the top to get all the, uh, the fuel that goes from liquid to, uh, to a gas out of the way because it could be an explosive mixture. It, of course, has to be moved for the shuttle to take off. There was a potential hitch in the launch yesterday as NASA Administrator Daniel Golden met with a panel of independent safety experts to determine if Mir was safe enough for an astronaut to visit. The experts told him it was fine. There's been lots of criticism of Golden and the NASA policy of allowing astronauts to continue living on the troubled space station, at least in the United States. John, you were at the final pre-launch briefing there this morning. Was anybody surprised at Golden's decision to send Dave Wolf? I think that there uh, was certainly a lot of surprise that uh, that the decision was made, at least amongst the press corps. And I think in Washington, uh, uh, James Sensenbrenner, uh, head of the House Science Committee, uh, said that uh, he's not pleased with it. He, of course, chaired the committee last week uh, that heard a lot of the uh, testimony of the problems on Mir. And uh, he certainly said uh, he's not happy about this decision. And the members of the media here quizzed them and grilled them very thoroughly. But, of course, the line has been right along. The the vehicle is safe, uh, Mir is safe, no more of a problem now than it ever has been. So that's why the decision was taken, purely from a technical standpoint, according to the administrator. John? Yeah, John, I just checked in with Mission Control in Moscow, and the Russians say that Mir is where it's supposed to be. Its computer is working. Countdown in the final half minute. We're going to listen to that. And if anything goes wrong in the last 30 seconds, we'll let you know what happens. Critical functions. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for main engine. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Atlantis, extending America's presence in space while opening new chapters in exploration. Houston now controlled. Houston now controlling, rolling, roll program initiated to place Atlantis on its heads down track over the Atlantic. Three engines at 104%, preparing the throttle down to 67% for max Q, passing through the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. Three engines throttling down now. Atlantis, you can ignore 
read the water spray boiler quantity message. Three engines at 67 now passing through maximum aerodynamic pressure at 58 seconds. There was a danger readout in the cockpit and, and the ground told the crew to ignore miles it. Per hour now. Altitude 8.8 .8 miles, downrange 5.8 miles. Atlantis, go at throttle up. Go at throttle up and we'll ignore the fuel cell belt to the alpha. Three engines back at 104%. Now Atlantis moving at 1,600 miles per hour. Atlantis, that is a deucer. Copy and concur. Three good fuel cells, three good APUs, three engines running at 104%. Atlantis now moving at over 2,000 miles per hour, 18.4 miles in altitude, downrange 16 miles. One of the... Um, uh, three auxiliary power units on board Atlantis seconds away uh, gave the crew a warning that its cooling system, a water spray no, boiler, was malfunctioning, but uh, indications from the ground are that that's not the case. It is a transducer. The uh, capsule communicator called up to the shuttle and said, is it a, it's a deucer problem, meaning a transducer, which is a sending device on that boiler. Have solid rocket booster separation confirmed. Beautiful picture. The scariest part of the shuttle launch Guidance has just ended. Performance nominal. Mm -hmm. Nominal performance. Performance during first stage uh, considered nominal. Now three engines running at 104% as intended. Three good APUs, three good fuel cells. Atlantis now 48 miles downrange. Atlantis, two engine Maroon. John Zarella, uh, as we watched this launch, uh, and our viewers watched it around the world, they saw the TV screens turn to bright red, yellow, and orange. It was like a, the prettiest sunset anybody had ever seen. Is that what it looked like from your position on the ground? Yes, exactly. Quite spectacular tonight, uh, John. And uh, you couldn't see the thin layer of clouds here until Atlantis. You couldn't see them just looking up until Atlantis actually got up close to them. And then it uh, went through a very thin layer of cloud and disappeared. It looked like a faint star in the distance from the ground, unlike what the uh, the NASA pictures, those clear NASA pictures showed. Of course, I'm sure that was a very exhilarating moment for David Wolf's uh, mother, who was here with NASA, not with us, but here at the Space Center with NASA Administrator Dan Golden uh, over at one of the VIP sites. I'm sure a great sigh of relief from her and certainly from Administrator Golden to get this vehicle off the ground. John? That's right. Everybody who's done a safety study of the Mir space station has said the most dangerous time for somebody going to Mir isn't on Mir. It's the uh, two and a half minutes that just transpired till those solid rockets fell off the side of the shuttle. So it was a good launch uh, from everything we were able to hear from space and from the ground controllers. John Zarella, thank you. And to our viewers, we thank you as well. That concludes our coverage of the live launch of the shuttle. We'll be back with more. Stay with CNN.